I'd like to talk about some educational theories that will inform my future teaching. The first one is from Piaget. Piaget believed in developmental stages of learning, of cognition. The first stage is sensory motor, which is from zero to two years old. The second stage is pre-operational, from two to seven years old. The third stage is concrete operational, from seven to 11 years old. And the last is formal operational stage, which is from 11 on to adulthood. Piaget says you cannot cross these stages of learning. My little three-year-old niece cannot think in abstract ideas like you and I might in adulthood. Piaget also created the idea of schema, and schema is the mental representation of the world around you. So if I said I want you to think of a park, you would think of some maybe a park you've already been to or a park you enjoy going to quite often. Schemas can be built upon and also adjusted. Assimilation is where you add new information to an existing schema. So if um, my little niece goes to Crater Lake with me and I say we're going to a park and she thinks of a park as a place with lots of grass and a swing set, she can assimilate new information and say, hey, parks also have trees. If I said, I want you to think of a park and you thought of a national park, you might think of Crater Lake. And I say, now add a swimming pool, then you would probably have to adjust your schema and say, hey, that's not exactly the same type of park I was thinking of. You're adjusting or accommodating that schema into uh, what I'm asking you to think about. Vygotsky is the next theorist that I'd like to talk about. Vygotsky has the idea of social learning. Vygotsky's social development theory says that social interaction has a lot to do and precedes cognition. Community plays a vital role in the process of making meaning. Vygotsky also came up with the idea of the ZPD or the Zone of Proximal Development. The ZPD is just beyond what you can reach on your own and that therefore you need someone to help you. He believed that learners need a teacher or a MKO more knowledgeable other who will push that envelope and make you learn a, just a little bit more than you could on your own. Social factors play a big role in contributing to cognitive development in terms of Vygotsky's theory. Brunner's idea of scaffolding is another theory. Scaffolding says that you start at the ground floor and you just keep building upon your information until you reach a higher level of learning. Brunner believed learners are able to learn any material as long as it's organized in a way that works. Again, a person who can help with the knowledge acquisition is very important in the idea of scaffolding. He also believed in a spiral curriculum where you go further and further, but you revisit an idea and you keep adding more and more detail to it. Pavillo's dual coding idea says that both verbal and visual information is processed differently. Both verbal and visual codes are used to organize information into knowledge that can be acted upon as well as stored and recalled later. Dual coding says that we humans have a hard time attending to multiple auditory and visual cues at the same time. A good example of dual coding is a documentary on the rainforest perhaps. And so if you think of the rainforest and you have a narrator who's telling you about the rainforest, that's okay, but that's just one code. Dual code says that the narrator is telling you about the rainforest as well as showing you about the rainforest and how it interacts. And that really solidifies the information that you can recall later a much more easier. A bad example of dual coding is where I expect you to listen to me as well as read all this back here. 
that's just a lot of reading and listening that you can't do at the same time, especially if they're two different subjects. Now that I've talked about some different theories, I'd like to talk about some practical uses in the classroom using educational tools. The first activity that I would love to use in my future classroom is blogging in education. And so the way this would work is I would have my students have each have their own blog that I would set up for them and each student would have the RSS feeds of the other students and so they could comment on their each other's and they would have an audience that they would know would be reading their stories. Blogging in education can be anything from writing a creative story for a post to writing a book report or even a state report. Using blogging for an activity in the classroom really shows the theory of Vygotsky and his social development theory. The students will be working together, they will be working, partnering with each other so that they can create and they can improve themselves. So a student might say, hey, that's a great post, but you might add a little bit more. You might, have you ever thought about this angle over here? What about this question? And I, as a teacher, will also work to help the students learn through the ZPD and push that envelope even further so their knowledge base is much more. This activity will be great for diversity as well because of learning diversities. Some students work really well with typing out information and organizing it that way, whereas others can just visualize it or others have to read it <clears throat> and see it working. Um, some need to be active and some need other activities. Um, this is a great activity, I think, that will help the diversity and just level that playing field for others. My next activity is Skype in the classroom. We would Skype with the classroom and myself as a teacher and the teacher from far away would help to scaffold that knowledge so my students might not know anything about India. They might know where it is ge geographically, but they might not know anything else. And so this would just help with scaffolding of the cultural knowledge that they have. Um, we would work to present our, our culture and our society as well to the other students. And so the other students from far away would also get a great cultural knowledge of where we are at locally. This idea of using Skype in the classroom will also help with diversity in, in terms of socioeconomic status and background because some students will not have access to a computer at home with a, a webcam or a fast enough internet connection. This is where students would be able to use the Skype in the classroom and learn more. It also addresses the socioeconomic issue as well for those students that might not be able to travel far away to India because they might never get a chance to see India firsthand. But at least with this activity, they could see a little portion of what India is and, and what it's all about and its culture. And I think that's really important. A third activity that I would love to use in the classroom is iPods. iPod Touches have amazing capabilities with all the different apps that are out there. There are um, many possible ways to use this in the classroom, from the simple ability to use uh, an educational game like a math game or a, a high frequency word game, to using audio tours with different places and, and GPS locations. I, I would use these in the classroom all the time if I had a classroom set or even just five iPod touches that the class would rotate using. These are great for the theory of dual coding because there are so many apps out there that give both verbal and visual cues. I think of um, a game called Word Bingo. And this is for high frequency words for like kindergarten and first grade, and it goes up higher as well. But um, word bingo is great because it gives a, a word like hat. And then the student is asked to tab the word hat. 
and so it helps with visual and verbal. It gives them an auditory sound and tells them something that they need to, to tap on. And, and there are so many apps out there that are both, both have the visual and the verbal cues in there. It helps with dual coding. If my class was going to the High Desert Museum, which is a local museum here in Bend, I could go beforehand, take an iPod Touch, and record some information about different exhibits around the area. And then on their own, when they're going around to the different exhibits, they can see perhaps the bird area. And they can listen to an audio of me saying, you know, this, the black bird in the left-hand side is this kind of bird. And, and that is, just helps even more with dual coding. Also, iPods can help with language learners. There are lots of language learning apps out there. And so if there is someone who's learning a language, they can use an iPod Touch and they can get some vocabulary and grammar just from the iPod Touch apps. And that helps with the diversity of, of language learning. There are many different activities and theories that I'll use in my future classroom, all because of what I've learned in my master's program. And I look forward to using each and every one of these theories and activities 